The border of Israel and Syria has been relatively quiet for the last year, after the Assad regime retook the area from rebels in the Syrian civil war. But in the Druze villages of the Golan Heights, a new threat is looming. Hezbollah, the Iran-backed Lebanese army, is covertly moving into the border area and building up its forces. Mendi Safadi is a Druze born on the Syrian border and an expert on Hezbollah's new front against Israel. We know that uh, Hezbollah and Iran try to uh, find a way to uh, attack Israel from uh, the Syrian uh, border. They move uh, weapons from uh, Iraq, from Damascus, from other places to uh, the south of Syria. The Druze, an Arab minority in the Golan Heights, are at the core of this new tension. They live on both sides of the border, split since Israel took over the area in 1967. Safadi says Hezbollah and Iran are coercing a small number of Druze villagers into fighting and spying against Israel. They pay them a lot of money. And if they succeed, the stakes are high for the Druze people. If Hezbollah make any activity against Israel, my family in Majdal Shams and my people in Majdal Shams will be the first uh, people who, uh, who attacked it. Majd al-Shams is a Druze village on the Israel side of the border. Most people there still identify as Syrian. The Golan Heights is a part of Syria, and Israel is occupying the Golan Heights. I wish peace and the return of the Syrian Golan Heights to its owners. But loyalty to Syria does not necessarily mean loyalty to the Assad regime, who Safadi says is cooperating with Hezbollah and Iran. The Syrian regime is a criminal regime to the people of Syria because it forced the people to flee their homes and imprisoned a huge number of people, killed a lot of people, destroyed Syria in order to stay in power. Israel has not ignored this new threat from Hezbollah. I have a clear message for Iran and for Hezbollah. Israel knows what you're doing, Israel knows where you're doing it. Israel is blamed for dozens of recent strikes in Syria, meant to stop Hezbollah's covert operations, something the state does not officially acknowledge. Uh, all the weapons we try to, uh, to enter to, to the uh, uh, South Syria, uh, we bump a lot of them. These strikes are further complicating the situation for the Israeli Druze, who say they are against foreign intervention in Syria. Hezbollah can't use Syrian land to attack Israel. This is not their land. We're against any aggression by Israel against Syria. If Israel wants to secure its citizens, we ask them to work towards real peace with Syria and even with Iran and Hezbollah, and give everyone their rights. Then there'll be no fear and anxiety. I am surprised that Israel is bombing inside Syria, using the excuse that it's bombing Hezbollah and Iran. On one hand, Israel and the United States are supporting Assad staying. On the other hand, they know that Bashar Assad is responsible for the existence of Hezbollah in Syria, thus the destruction of Syria. But even if someone disapproves of Assad's regime, supporting Israel is a complicated topic amongst Golan Druze. 95% of the Druze in the side of Israel. But 70% uh, they can't talk about that because uh, everyone have family in Syria. Roughly 10% of Golan Heights Druze have accepted Israeli citizenship since 1967. However, this may be changing. Today you don't see uh, young people which stand and say we, we are against Israel. The Druze in the Golan Heights may continue to turn towards Israel as Hezbollah and by extension Iran continue to embed themselves in the Golan Heights. These Druze villages have a unique perspective and an important role to play, living on two sides of a future front line between Israel and Hezbollah. Craig Johnson, I-24 News.